I V M. All right, welcome guys to another episode of I V M Likes. On this awesome episode, we are talking about food-related movies, food-related TV shows, books, recipe books. I don't know anything is on the table. Anything and everything, guys. Uh, joining me today on this episode are Amit Doshi again. Hey, Amit. Hi, how are you? Hey, hello. And Utsav Mamoria. Hey, hey Utsav. everyone. Hi. Hope you're enjoying the long weekend. <laughs> yeah, very much so. Yeah, I know. Uh, although we are working on this long we're weekend, taking the first recording thing. an episode. Well, I will blame this on Antariksh. Antariksh should have scheduled this yesterday. Yes, Antariksh. it's my fault. Yes. Awesome. Amazing. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah, but never mind. I, I like talking about food, so I don't mind it all. <laughs> yeah. Hey, and Gandhi, uh, Gandhi also ate food, I'm sure. He was also a fan of, Not much. Fan of food. Not much. If you looked at him, he didn't that's eat true. much food. Yeah, yeah, he fasted all the time. Yeah, that's, that's very true. So yeah. much fasting. He wasn't a fan he was of food. A, he was a fan of salt, though. Yeah. He liked it enough to Uh, make a long march about it. Yeah, Yeah, correct. Uh, So for those of you who don't know, Utsav is also the host of Postcards from Nowhere on the IVM Network, which is a great show. So please check that out. Yes, uh, and we recently finished 50 episodes. since 50 episodes, man. Amit has not booted me out yet of the IVM Network. I'm I'm going for 100 episodes now. So, yes. (laughs) Yeah, and 99, (laughs) another dicey point. (laughs) Uh, Okay, very cool. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, all right. So uh, on the show, as I said in the beginning of the, of the episode, uh, we'll be talking about in the second half. We'll be talking about food-related movies, books, TV shows, anything, anything's on the table. Uh, in the first half, for those of you who don't know, what we do usually is we recommend something that we've recently checked out uh, within the pop culture sphere. This has to be something that we've re- that we have recently checked out, but it can be something old, something new, anything in between. Uh, so let's say, what's up? Would you like to start us off, man? Okay, so I uh, am a completely audio and a books person. I'm not into video too much, right? So I'm not, I don't really binge on Netflix or Amazon Prime, but I definitely binge on books and I read extensively. So uh, I, I recently been checking out, uh, I read, read two or three books together. That's how I like reading. It's largely nonfiction. Uh, so I'm currently reading a wonderful book uh, called India Moving. Uh, it's called A History of Migration. Right. It's essentially a history of uh, migration within and outside of India. Right. And that is such fascinating histories. Right. Uh, and uh, in fact, I remember that I did a short episode on the UDP migration on my travel podcast, which was into UDP restaurants in Bombay. Right. And uh, the entire history is fascinating how you have the whole set of UDP restaurants across the country. And it's all of these people actually come from that one single place of UDP and how, you know, uh, droughts, floods and natural calamities made actually people migrate en masse. And now it's just become one of those rites of passage in that area that more and more people, you know, just migrate uh, to uh, outside UDP and set up restaurants. And it's like almost like a household uh, industry, if I may call it, in in, in some ways. So how, uh, how long uh, ago does this history go? I mean, like, is it, are we talking modern history or are we talking? It's modern like... history. It's modern history. It's probably about 100, 150 years. Okay. Right. Uh, so it's definitely uh, modern history. It really accelerated, I think, in the last 50 to 70 years. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, what makes it unique is that this is not the only such history. There are so many such histories in India. Uh, and you'll be fascinated to know that there is a community in Tamil Nadu which speaks uh, a dialect of Gujarati called Saurashtri. Oh, right? wow. Uh, really? Yeah, because, uh-huh. uh, yeah. And uh, now, with the, of course, the language they speak now is a language which is a mix of Tamil and uh, the, the Saurashtri dialect of Gujarati. Right, right. And that's happened because uh, at a certain time in Saurashtra, uh, the climatic conditions were very harsh. A mm-hmm. uh, whole set of traders actually migrated down to Tamil Nadu. Yeah. Right. So that's, uh, that's actually one of the reasons why I ask because I mean that's actually my family history, right? So uh, oh, my family, yeah. So what? my family, Tamil? yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, not Tamil Nadu, but yeah, basically okay. the, the the migration, right? So right. Uh, we originally come from a a town called Dholera. It's one of the smart oh, yes. cities being created now, correct, correct. if you will, right? So, but originally we came from the so from that town, and so my family's his, uh, uh, historical antecedents are there. Hmm. But because of climate issues, basically constant flooding. Uh, impassable, right? So basically, I remember, I, I remember going there in like 1983 or 84 or something like that, right? Mm. It's 10, 12 years old, something of that nature. And when we went, it, we went during the monsoon and you couldn't get there because the entire way to get, so Dolera is like on a little peninsula and there's a mm. little isthmus road that you need to use to get to the village itself, mm. completely flooded, un- impassable, right? And mm. imagine that in a pre-car, pre-bus era. Right. And so we kind of all got like a first hand uh, experience of why the family migrated to a different city. 
So that, that's why I was asking you, what is like, you know, how long is that? Because I mean, like in our family, that's not that old. It happened in like, I think the late 1910s or something like that, 1910s, uh-huh. uh, maybe 1920 or something like that. But it's still something that we know as part of our family history. Oh, yeah. oh okay. Uh, so also, uh, how close is this uh, Gujarati dialect to actual Gujarati though, still? Not, not uh, I mean, it's it's, it? it's not very close now because you have to also understand that uh, something like language is so fluid and so dynamic yeah. that, yeah. Uh, and especially if it's a dialect where, which is spoken by a very small set of people, it can morph very, very quickly, right? Vis a vis large yeah. languages spoken by a large swath of people, which take time to, you know. So my understanding is that maybe someone today who is from Saurashtra uh, might be able to catch some words. But not really uh, a sentence or a paragraph. Okay, exactly what's happening. Even think about English, right? Think about English from a hundred years ago. It's very different from yeah. English is today, yeah. right? Okay. So I mean, like yeah. it, the, the uh, or even his English from like fifty years ago, very different from English today. These these uh, languages move quick. Yeah, yeah, very true. And also, just English within uh, England itself, in different parts of England, is sounds very different. Very different, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and I'm, I'm reading very very interesting stuff about India. For example. Uh, I mentioned this a couple of other places I've been to that uh, I had traveled to Armenia uh, during the time I sub- took a sabbatical. And there is actually documented history of Indians migrating to Armenia. And that's mm-hmm. how probably there are still some 10,000 odd Aryans, people who call themselves as Aryans, uh, remaining in Armenia, right? So the fascination of India history is not just people coming in from India, but also people going in from outside. For example, I, I spent a, quite a bit of time in Myanmar. Right. And Myanmar actually has uh, a, a huge set of people who trace their histories back to Tamil Nadu again. Right. Because that was a sort of a, a scope of migration, which sort of, you know, uh, went there. And uh, those people, again, also speak a dialect of uh, a Burmese, which has a mix of Tamil in it. Right. Oh, I thought uh, you were going to say Gujarati again. That would have been hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, I mean, I think you just need to probably go to East Africa to realize <laughs> some new dialect has been created. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, and uh, very, very interesting histories. Of course, uh, there's also the mention of the Siddhi community in Gujarat. Now, when you mentioned Gujarat, it brings me back to me, right? So, there are essentially people who were slaves who were brought in from Africa, right, uh, into India. And uh, some of them rose to become chieftains and, uh, you know, uh, and mostly slaves and uh, rose to power. And that's why you still have a Siddhi community in Gujarat whose skin color would look at uh, look like that they came from the African continent, right? But they will speak perfectly fluent Gujarati or Antariksh, which I think you will also understand. Uh, I, I'm not Gujarati. Just, just you live in Bombay. You should understand that by now. There was a famous yeah. general this year that came from this community, wasn't yes, there? Yes, yes, yes. I, I can't. Uh, I think it's uh, Maktab Ambar, I think. Yeah, I, I feel like a Mughal general or something like that, uh, or yeah. anti or fighting the Mughals or one of those. I think he was on the side of the Marathas, but I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, I, I can't uh, either remember that yeah. for sure. But yeah. so I think his, his name was Maktab Ambar, and he oh. was a, a, a Siddhi. Uh, and you know, there are so many of these pockets. Of course, Parsis are the famous one. I mean, I think most people know the stories of the Parsis, right. how they came from Iran, uh, you know, persecution and the entire story of Jade Rana, the king who allowed the Parsis to come and stay in India. And this whole story about milk and sugar, uh, you know, and it's a very interesting one. So of course, the, uh, the well-known stories are there, but also the lesser known stories are there. And I think it also must be, uh, busts a lot of myths around the entire migration debate. And to me, it becomes important because uh, especially when we're going through a time of saying that, oh, this is authentic and this is original and this is corrupted. I mean, everything is corrupted. There is nothing which is authentic or original, right? The world is such a complex place. There are so many influences to everything that nothing is original. Everything is meta in in, in one way or the other, right? So uh, a a very simple example is just the food. And uh, I'm sorry, I'm I'm moving into food a little earlier. No, no, it's perfect. But the food uh, food itself, right? I mean, potatoes are not native to India. Rajma is not native to India. Chilies are not native native to India, right? Uh, And saffron is not native to India, right? So half of the things we eat today and consider so desi are just not native to India. So, you know, when people say that, oh, I want to feed authentic food from a certain region, it is authentic in the modern memory we have of that food, right? I mean, 400 years ago, probably no one even thought that potato could be eaten. It did not exist. We used, for example, instead of chili, we all used long pepper or black pepper, yeah. right? We did not even have green chilies. But now people talk of green chilies as if it's the most uh, Indian thing to do. Uh, so, yeah, I think it also touches upon a lot of things on population movements, on languages, on food on culture and so on. And it's, it's, it's written from an Indian perspective because it's by this historian named Chinmay Tumbe. And, uh, Wait, I know that name. Uh, yes. Uh, he has been on the IBM network, uh, once okay. as a guest. So that's actually how I discovered him and his. Ah, group. okay. 
Okay. Uh, so yeah, IBM. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, he has also himself has a fascinating history of his own name. So huh. his name Tumbe was actually Tambe, right? Uh, but uh, he was his family was also a migrant into Maharashtra. But during the times uh, when uh, the Shivsena was especially hard on people uh, uh, from outside, they changed their name from Tumbe to Tambe to avoid detection of the region of origin. Mm. So which is why uh, he himself says that they probably will not find another Tambe family in India because it's it's a completely made up surname in some way. <laughs> <laughs> so that itself, I think, is a very nice backdrop to his story of uh, migration as a as a person. Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. Could, could interesting just, stuff, man. I, my, the, the the whole like you know pattern of how people go from one place to the other place and stuff like that. I, I find that endlessly fascinating. Again, like you know, I mean, like I spoke a little bit about the Gujarat stuff, but then I also have the U.S. in my family's history, right? Hmm. Uh, where my my father was one of uh, six brothers, four of whom eventually settled in the U.S. Okay. Right. So I mean, like you know, it is a uh, it, it's interesting how uh, how much people move from place to place. Hmm. Yeah, it is. It is very cool. Uh, could you just name the book again? The book is called India Moving, A History of Migration by Chinmay Tumbe. Okay, very cool. And I imagine people can just get this on Kindle. Amazon, yeah. yeah. Amazon, Amazon yeah. Kindle everywhere. Nice. Yeah, yeah. It's a very penguin cool. publication, that great, so yeah. That's a great recommendation. Uh, thank you. Amit, would you yes. like to go ahead, man? Uh, sure. I have, uh, well, so I mean, like, you know, this is a sitcom, fun sitcom. Uh, let's be very clear. It's a very standard sitcom. It's like, you know, multicam, old school, old fashioned type. Uh, but I really enjoyed it. Uh, so I'm sure most of our audience has heard of Gabriel Iglesias. He does the whole fluffy yep. thing and he does yep. like, you know, Comedian he does a lot of, up. uh, he does a lot of actually, he has a yep. lot of India in his routines, right? I mean, like, uh, yep. uh, one is he does some accents and stuff like that, but not just accents. He also did like, uh, he had a big, uh, I think he, I remember a couple of years ago seeing he had a huge routine about his trip to India when he had come to do a gig over here. And it was like a 20, 25 minute, just talking about like, you know, difference between Indian culture and Mexican culture and that kind of thing. Right. Yeah. Uh, but really interesting thing. So he has a show called Iglesias on uh, Netflix. Uh, very, uh, it's a it's a really fun comic. Uh, sorry, very, uh, it's a really fun sitcom. But it's you know uh, again you know the, the, it's classic. It feels familiar in some ways, but it's really uh, it's well done and put together. He's a teacher. He's a he, he's a teacher. He uh, he teaches in a school with a bunch of kids who are about to get thrown out of the school, and he helps them. Uh, you know. Thrive and uh, thrive and edu- uh, thrive while they're uh, getting their education, right? So the the yeah. theme is very simple. There's nothing very complicated about it, right? But it's got a really fun star cast. Uh, so uh, Gabriel Iglesias is always really fun. Uh, the principal is played by uh, Cheryl. Uh, damn it, I can't remember her name. Uh, she was the one who played Marshall's friend in How I Met Your Mother. Um, uh, you know the one who Marshall traveled across the country with. Uh, Marshall traveled across the country with someone. But Mar- Mar- Marshall went on a bus. No, he was on a bus ride with this woman when he was trying to get back from oh, okay. Minnesota to. Uh, he was trying to get back for his uh, for a baby's birth or for an anniversary or something like that. Oh, this is in one of the much later seasons. Much right? later seasons, yeah, yeah, oh, okay. yeah much later stop. seasons. Uh, <laughs> one second, I'll, 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 hold on. Uh, like, uh, we're we're going to have to edit this a little bit because I am. Uh, okay, no, no worries. Uh, uh, another quick fun fact about uh, Gabriel, Gabriel Iglesias, just uh, since we're talking about him. Uh, there is a video on YouTube on Business Insider, the the YouTube channel, okay. about Gabriel Iglesias and his massive Volkswagen bus collection. He has like this huge collection of Volkswagen buses. Okay. And it is a fascinating video because he has like all the years that are, they have ever existed. He has like one missing from his collection or something he talks about. <laughs> oh it's great. God. It's just great, dude. The so Volkswagen is... buses are like these mini vans. They're not exactly buses, like full-size buses. Right. Yeah, yeah. They're like these mini vans and uh, they it's look really good. And he's because go- that's actually yeah. the car that he's driving in the show. He's no driving wonder. a Volkswagen. Oh, that makes sense. Oh, okay. That makes sense. So yeah. that that is kind of interesting. But uh, yeah. no, so the, the the actress who I was thinking of was uh, Sherry Shepard. Uh, so she's been in a bunch of stuff. If you see her, you'll recognize her immediately. She plays yeah. the principal. Uh, there are a couple of other teachers. Uh, Joe Piscopo shows up. He plays. Oh. Uh, one of the other teachers, then uh, there are a bunch of different kids, like, you know, uh, again, typical, uh, you know, uh, classroom kind of vibe. You have the stoner and you have the disruptor and you have the hot girl and you have the smart girl and, you know, fairly 
cliched in that sense, but just really well put yep. together. And sometimes there's not. Uh, sometimes things are cliche for a reason because that that the cliche is fun. It's it, you know it works, and I really enjoyed the show. I think like you know it's uh. It's a show about nice things, right? And that's yeah. one of my things. I, I, I kind of like watching sitcoms where I don't like the mean sitcoms so much, right? So I'm not a Curb Your yeah. Enthusiasm fan, for example, because I feel like Curb Your oh. Enthusiasm is mean, right? Uh, Larry Davis' humor is like at the expense of other people, right? And yeah. so I'm not a big fan of that so much. I, li- I, I like humor, which is more kind of uh, collegial, more ge- generous, if you will, right? And so this yeah. okay. this fits into that. So there's a camaraderie between the cast. Uh, yeah. I know they take digs at each other because they're friends and they know each other. So it's not putting down someone. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Like uh, again, I know. I, I know. Curb is considered to be brilliant, and it is brilliant, yeah. right? Yeah. But it okay. is also mean spirited. Hmm. I mean, yeah, for sure. For the most part, that's because that he's basically in in Curb. Larry David is shown as socially inept. So yeah. basically, his uh, interactions turn out to be mean spirited. Even though he does, he, his his intention is like, yeah, this is just the way I am. Right. Uh, but he seems mean because yeah. of it. But yeah, cool. This sounds great, Iglesias. But yeah, uh, no, and, highly recommend Mr. Iglesias on Netflix. Mr. Iglesias on Netflix, right? Yes. Yeah, very cool. And also check out that uh, that Volkswagen uh, bus video with yes, Iglesias because why not? Yeah, this is that. All right. The what I'm going to recommend is again. Uh, last week I recommended an anime called One Piece. This week I'm going to recommend another anime. Uh, I, Oh, so are you a fan of say Japanese anime and manga? No, no? not at no. all. It's, but I know uh, One Piece. Fine. I know One Piece though. Oh, you do? In fact, I'll oh, tell cool, you why man. I know One Piece. Uh, so yes, I, uh, about six, five, six years ago, I used to work in China, and okay. uh, anime, of course, is is is, is a rage in, in China huge, as yeah. well. I mean, so yeah, it's yeah, globally, yeah. but also it's in yeah. China as well. Yeah, and we were yeah. trying to understand that uh, how across generations of young Chinese, their choice of anime is defining their individualization from a collective mm. society. Right, mm-hmm. so uh, there is one piece is is one of the famous ones, and there's another yeah. one which is which is the name I can't forget, I can't remember right now. And how? How long back? Big, how long back were you in China? Uh, Two thousand fourteen. Like, uh, fourteen. Okay. okay. So right. and uh, how the different characters they are, the different character journeys and the personalities they have are echoing the kind of personal journeys young Chinese people are taking through a society which is which is which is which is closed in some ways uh, and open in many others, and how yeah. are they dealing with you know parental control, government control. Uh, yeah. So it was fascinating to sort of you know look at it from that lens, and that was my introduction to anime. To be very honest, so I, I had friends really? who wow. watched Naruto and stuff, but I was never into it. Uh, Again, I've seen all of that, man. I'm yeah. so an, an anime nerd. It's yeah. really funny. <laughs> so that's yeah. how I know One Piece actually, and it oh, that's very cool. Dude. You know, it's uh, so outside of India, One Piece is very popular, but I think in India, very few people uh, either follow it or have heard of it, which is uh, kind of uh, kind of sad because it's one of the biggest uh, comic book series in the world. But uh, anyway, today, this week, today, what I'm going to recommend is a show called My Hero Academia. Have uh, either of you heard I, of this? I've heard of it, but I have no idea what it's about. I, 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 okay. I remember. The Jap- all right. The Japanese the- name huh. is uh, Boku no Hero Academia, uh, translates to My Hero Academia. It is basically about, uh, so in this world, 97% of the population have a quirk. Quirk is what they call a superpower, basically. They okay. don't call them superpowers, they call them quirks. Okay, mm-hmm. and 97% of the other population in this world have quirks. Uh, about 3% of people are born quirkless. They're called being born quirkless. Our main protagonist is born quirkless, uh, but his dream is to be the number one hero. Uh, the number one superhero. So superheroes in this world just exist. People who are born with quirks, people with uh, can use their quirks to help the to betterment of society, to help people, save people against monsters because if there are superheroes, there have to be monsters. And... Uh, uh, so uh, th- that's part of it. These guys just help. Uh, you can this guy's dream. So sorry, the main protagonist's dream is to be the number one superhero, but he's born quirkless, so he doesn't know what to do. Mm. Uh, he is a huge fan of the number one, the current number one hero of the in the world called All Might. That's the name of the superhero, whose superpower is uh, one for all. Okay, because his superpower is basically like a power which is uh, passed down from generation to, to generation. Mm-hmm. And after exp- after like looking at uh, this uh, young kid, his whose name is Midoriya, after looking at Midoriya's uh, just heroic, he has like a huge, awesome heroic moment in the first episode because of which All Might decides, okay, fine, this guy will be my successor. Uh, because uh, for reasons whatsoever, this guy uh, All Might decides that this guy is going to be my successor. And uh, that's what begins his journey to being the number one hero. And uh, it's in its like uh, fourth season of the anime just got over. And uh, it was so good that I couldn't couldn't wait to know more about the story. So I just started reading the manga as well. 
<laughs> and uh, so I'm now caught up on the manga, and now I'm sad because the anime is also not coming out. Animas, <laughs> the the manga is on hold for the next two weeks. Uh, because uh, during really, the Sunday, I've been having trouble. With all symptoms. <laughs> yeah, man, I really am, dude. So but did he? Does so he get good. the quirk? He does. He gets. So he gets the all my quirk, uh, one for all, which is basically like a power quirk, uh, which gives you like immense power, and uh, you can you can like travel even faster Andre, because you're so strong. Spoiler alerts before you say such stuff, right? No, no, these are not spoilers. These are not spoilers at all. This oh, is okay. basically the first episode. Uh, oh, so okay, that's fine. That's fine. Then. Ah, yeah, interesting. Yeah. So yeah, 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 this actually seems to be somewhat of a trope, right? Because again, as everybody probably knows, I read a lot of fantasy books, right? Yeah. And in fantasy books, there are there there generally magic systems and stuff like that. And yeah. there is definitely a trope about like you know the uh, the initial uh, the, the 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 protagonist initially being far behind everybody else in terms of his power. He yeah, is yeah, either he is, is his power is handicapped. People yeah. don't recognize his power. Whatever that means, right? I, I mean, like, I can think off the top of my head. I can think of like five different series where this happens. It happens yeah. in the Cradle series by uh, Will White. It happens in Jim Butcher's uh, series. Uh, uh, so Jim Butcher is known for two big series, right? So one is Harry Dresden and the other one is like based on Imperial Rome. It's the second series where this happens in, uh, again. Uh, this happens in uh, Zen, uh, uh, which is a Chinese uh, novel, kind of Chinese serial novel kind of thing. Uh, 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 you won't Zen believe something. this. Uh, if you're a Jackie Chan movie fan, uh, uh, in every Jackie Chan action sequence, he, does he basically starts off from the bottom. Yeah. Uh, basically, he'll have like a bomb in his mouth, his hands are tied or something. Mm-hmm. And then he'll like, basically fight his way to the top. Yeah. It's, that's why I love Jackie Chan. It's a classic underdog story we all love, right? So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, th- this anime has been going on. Uh, I would say since the last like six years. So the manga has been going on for about six seven years. Uh, the anime is again like four or five years. So this uh, is back. much more approachable than One Piece is for people. Oh, absolutely, because absolutely. This is like much yeah, more limited. This is uh, right now. This is in its two hundred and eighty fifth chapter. Okay. Uh, uh, My Hero Academia and One Piece is like nine hundred ninety seventh chapter or right. something. It's that's a nightmare to uh, <laughs> to actually get into. Although I did get my girlfriend uh, into One Piece and she is now hooked. Within like, I would say like five days, she has read like 400 chapters, which is ridiculous. Wow. <laughs> which is like, I don't, I don't know how anyone does that. She's but, not uh, hooked. Yeah. She's consumed by it now. She's consumed, basically. Yeah. <laughs> this is uh, this is her life. <laughs> One Piece become her life right now. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's my recommendation. My Hero Academia. You can follow the first four seasons on Netflix and you can read the manga just online. Just type My Hero Academia manga and you'll get it. It's all good. Uh, all right, that's about it. Uh, Utsav, uh, could you just quickly run by your recommendation again? We'll finish this yes. first half. So my recommendation uh, is India Moving by Chinmay Tumbe. It's history of India's migration, both in out and yeah. in and out migration, and tells you how wonderfully shaped our country is by so many influences from within the country uh, and outside. Uh, it's written by an Indian historian, uh, so I think uh, there, there's no not so much of a problem of the typical colonial gaze when you know Western historians write about India. So I think it's a really nice book. I really enjoyed reading it. Uh, and I think I'm going to end up reading it because some parts are really good. So yes, that's my recommendation for this. Okay, nice. And Amit? Uh, so yeah, my recommendation was Mr. Iglesias with, uh, uh, yeah, it's a sitcom on Netflix and it's a lot of fun, very easy to watch. Uh, 10 episodes, 30 minutes each. Basically, you're done in a couple of hours. Go for it. Nice. And uh, my recommendation was again from Netflix. It's called uh, My Hero Academia, the anime. You can re- please check out the manga also. A quick thing I forgot to uh, mention was uh, so the, the main heroes, the main protagonist is power, which is passed down from generation to, from generation to generation, is called One for All. And the main uh, antagonist of the series has the quirk called All for One. <laughs> so it's One for All and All for One. So you just it's perfectly opposing each other, <laughs> and that's how it goes. Uh, please check it out. You will really enjoy it. Uh, that's it for this half, first half of the show. Uh, see you guys on the other side. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another awesome week on the IVM Podcast Network. If you're not following us on social media, please do. We're IVM Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. I'd like to thank our sponsors this week, Intel. So Justine Royal came on Storytellers and Story Sellers this week with Vineet. It was a really interesting conversation. Do definitely check that out. Hamsuni Hariran is back on the Prakati podcast after an extended absence. Hamsuni was one of the original hosts along with Pravan, but she was unable to continue. But we're glad to have her back. She's talking about her experiences since she left. She's been studying in China. Definitely check that out. You'll enjoy that. On Pulia Bazi, they discuss the revolution of 1857 as seen from contemporary eyes. Definitely give that a shot. I think you'll love that as well. 
Abhijit Ganguly was on Cyrus Says a couple of weeks ago and he had such a great time and we were so happy to have him on that we asked him to join us for Cock and Bull and he was on this week. Do check that out. And lastly, I'd like to mention our Tamil show. We've been doing a show called Kadai Podcast Ponyan Selvan hosted by Kavita Jeeva. She has been phenomenal. She's rewritten the stories in a way which really, you know, they speak to a modern audience. But Ponyan Selvan is over and she has started a new story though. The new story that she started is Sivakamyan Sabatham. I'm sure I mangled that pronunciation and I'm sure you'll love it if you're a Tamil speaker. Do definitely check it out. And with that, let's get you onto your show. All right, we are back. Hey guys, joining me again are Amit and Utsav. Welcome back to the second half of the show. We're going to talk about food. Yes. Uh, Amit and I haven't eaten breakfast yet. Utsav has. Certainly. Uh, which is... Uh, <laughs> Which is just, which is really stupid on our part, really dumb on our part, yeah, because we're going to be super hungry. <laughs> we're just going to be super hungry after this episode. Well, actually, you know what? After you hear, so I've got three recommendations. After you hear two of them, you're not going to be hungry at all. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, God. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> let's just, let's just, uh, let's just start with you then, Amit. Uh, what, 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 what is your favorite right, so safe food? First, so movie first, I'll give you the recommendation, which will make you hungry, right? Right. Uh, so the movie starring Jean Favreau called Chef. Chef. Uh, wonderful movie. Really, wonderful. really, really nice. Makes you like, yeah. you know, again, you know, it's one of those joyous movies. Makes you very yeah. happy. Guy yeah. is a little bit of an asshole, but not too much of an asshole. You know, just yeah. good. Just like, just, you know, like assholey asshole. enough that you can like him as well yeah. right mm-hmm. uh and it's, it's it's a great movie right i mean like you know uh, driving across the country with his son uh yeah. learning more about like you know heritage cooking and stuff like that and like you know going yeah. back to his roots uh in terms of that so broadly the story is like you know he's a superstar chef he's yeah. part of a uh, he runs a restaurant or he is the chef of a restaurant having a lot of conflict with the person who owns the uh, with, with the restaurant because he wants to be more experimental this guy wants to be more traditional cook the old menu he gets a horrible review from somebody because he cooked a very uh, cook, cooked the old menu and uh, that review kind of uh, that that horrible review kind of leads to all the stuff that happens in the movie yeah, right correct. he freaks out at the restaurant owner and uh, you know uh, yeah. freaks out at the critic actually the critic comes back the next time cuz i i think he challenges him on twitter right yeah, he challenges the Twitter to come back, uh, the critic on Twitter to come back to the restaurant or what have you, yeah. and the guy comes back and then he blows up because uh, the new the owner will not let him serve the food that he wants to and makes him serve the old menu, and so it goes from there into like a journey of discovery, which is really uh, you know again, John Favreau is a fun guy to watch, so it's a f- uh, good fun kind of like you know nice movie again. Uh, you oh, know, also I- there's a fun Robert Downey Jr. cameo. Yes, there is uh, in the movie, and also the the restaurant owner is played by Dustin Hoffman. Uh, yes, he is. Again, yes, he is. Yes, he is. No, it's a great cast, right? I mean, like Scarlett uh, Johansson is there. Scarlett also, Johansson is there. Uh, John Leguizamo plays his sidekick. Oh yeah, John Leguizamo. Uh, what an yeah. actor, man! Yeah, I, I know. That guy. It, it's it's yeah, a really really fantastic. good uh, it's a really good uh, star cast. So, yeah. I mean, like uh, uh, I would highly recommend that. Uh, also, how epic is that grilled cheese scene, man? I know. I've seen just that scene like I don't know how many times. I love it so much. It's what uh, kind of got me back into grilled cheese sandwiches, right? Because exactly, I mean, you know, the thing I is that. Totally. Uh, yeah. When we make a grilled cheese sandwich, generally what you do is you you take some bread, you put a slice of cheese in it, you put it on like, you know, your uh, tava, and whatever, yeah. you, you just yeah. do it, right? Yeah. But I mean, like, you know, the idea of taking grated cheese, different kinds of cheeses, right? You know, exactly. trying to kind of yeah. do something with it. Uh, yeah. That kind of like, you know, uh, after I saw that movie, I'm like, you know what? I need to make a real grilled cheese sandwich. Yeah, put some absolutely. shit in it, right? I mean, like, not yeah. just like, you know, don't just lay, make it like just be a cheese and pickled jalapeno sandwich, right? I mean, like, exactly. you know, put something yeah. in it, right? You, you know, yeah. I, yeah, so I, I, I really uh, do enjoy that movie. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, just a quick side note again about the chef movie. There is, uh, after that, uh, John Favreau with the chef who was behind the scenes of the chef movie, who was teaching him all this stuff, how to make all this stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, he and that chef have started a Netflix show called Chef again. Uh, and the Netflix show basically follows John Favreau's journey into becoming an awesome chef. Interesting. I haven't uh, seen that. I, I, I've yeah. seen the promo for it, but I haven't seen the show. Yeah. So he like he's uh, he's learning his culinary skills on the show, and it's really interesting to see because you can tell that he is actually behind the scenes doing a lot, like taking a lot of effort to become better at the stuff. Right. And uh, it's great. It's great to see. Just check out. They go to different uh, different other like head chefs. They go, I think they went to Wolfgang, uh, what's his, Wolfgang Wolf Gartner? Camp what's his Peterson. name? Wolfgang Peterson. And they went to him and uh, he teaches them like a bit and then they have to make it themselves. It's, it's actually a really good, uh, really good show about food. 
on FX. Cool. Uh, I had um, a couple of yeah. other things that I wanted to kind of uh, bring up as uh, quote unquote food movies. Uh, yeah. so, uh, the, the, the two movies I thought, uh, I, I was thinking of food movies, right? And I was just thinking of what were like, you know, some of the most, uh, well shot. And I thought of these two movies because they're extraordinarily well shot. Yeah. Uh, one of them is a French movie called, uh, Delicatessen that is directed by the same person who directed Amelie, who directed, uh, the city of lost children. Sorry. The city of lost okay. children, not midnight. Uh, midnight right. children was a Salman Rushdie thing. Salman Rushdie yeah. Uh, the, uh, the city of lost children, Amelie, alien resurrection, uh, really, really, uh, good. Uh, he's a French director, John Pierre Jeunet, uh, really, really good director. Wait, uh, alien resurrection. Oh, that's the movie. That's the movie alien him? resurrection. Yeah. He was, he was oh. a director of that movie as well. Oh, cool. uh, the, the the one that came out a few years ago, like not a few years ago, like a long time ago, but it was the Alien sequel that came out many years after Alien yeah, 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 came yeah. out, right? <clears throat> huh. So, uh, and the other one I want to bring up was uh, The Cook, The Thief, His Wife, and Her Lover. That was directed by uh, Peter Greenaway. Uh, both of these movies are like, you know, late 80s, early 90s, uh, kind of this. Uh, the Cook, The Thief, His Wife, and Her, uh, Her Lover stars uh, Helen Mirren uh, and... Uh, Michael Gambon, uh, Dumbledore from Harry Potter, book yeah, four yeah. onwards. Uh, so the yeah. two are there, right? Uh, yeah. Both of these movies have themes of cannibalism. Uh, oh, wow. So the way Delicatessen is set up, right? It's that it's set up in a post No lunch for me today. Thank you, Amit. <laughs> 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 uh, Delicatessen is a post-apocalyptic movie, uh, and so there is a uh, so the guy is a landlord, come butcher, and he uh, one of the things that one of the reasons why people want to stay in his building is because he has cheap meat, and he gets cheap meat by basically luring people into his butcher shop and then butchering them and then serving the meat to <laughs> his tenants. Wow. Uh, weird, bizarre, but yeah. incredibly compelling. Uh, the Cook, the Thief, His Wife, and His Lover is a more complicated kind of this, right? So one, I'll say this. Uh, this movie is probably the most gorgeously shot movie I have ever seen in my life other than, uh, uh, what is the name of the movie that was made by Tarsen Singh? Uh, I, I uh, so uh, Tar- Tarsim had made a movie uh, uh, with uh, so other than that movie, this is probably the most gorgeous movie that I've ever seen shot in my life. Right, it's just so beautifully made. Every scene is like you know, there's a color palette to it, and everything plays within that color. It's just incredibly well shot. The story of it is that uh, the thief Michael Gambin, uh, his wife Helen Mirren, uh, Michael Gambin takes over a restaurant, uh, basically without the consent of the cook. Uh, and the wife's lover works for the cook inside the restaurant. Uh, the two of them, basically, uh, so Michael Gammon and Helen Mirren would go to the restaurant every night. Helen Mirren would sneak away. Uh, she would meet her lover uh, while Mal- Michael Gammon is doing his business. And uh, eventually they get caught. They have to kind of hide away, or rather uh, the, the lover hides away. Helen Mirren's still around. The lover hides away. Michael Gambon's trying to find out who the guy, uh, who the lover is, where the lover is, where the lover is. Uh, he's eventually able to find it out by torturing somebody who had been going to give him food. Uh, he finds him. He kills him. Helen Mirren then goes to the cook and insists that the cook cooks her lover. And then she forces Michael Gambon to eat him. Damn. Damn. <laughs> what? It is a incredibly bizarre movie but listen if you're into this kind of weird art housey type stuff yeah. from the 80s and 90s i recommend both of these movies fairly strongly Oof. Oh, it's and heavy, I recommend uh, if you want to lose weight, talk to Amit. He will do recommendations <laughs> which make you forget the idea of eating. It is a great, great way to lose weight. It's new in the market, just discovered, and it's free on IBM Likes. <laughs> Man, you won't believe. Just before this, I was uh, just doing some research on food movies, trying to remember what I remember, and uh, I happened upon that ha- that scene from Hannibal, the uh, Anthony Hopkins movie. There you guys don't want to talk about uh, the one with uh, he opens Bray Liotta's skull. And basically eats his brain in front of Julianne Moore, who's also there. <laughs> Andrex is now influenced by his boss. <laughs> yes, basically. I'm worried. <laughs> yeah. Hey, what's up? You want to make it to 100 episodes? You got you to gotta join the club, man. <laughs> Would you like some fava beans with that liver? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, that one, that one. Yeah, so quite disturbing. Uh, but uh, moving on, uh, what's up? Would you like to... Yes, uh, my recommendation is very normal. I would like to qualify that, first of all. And... Uh, so yeah, I mean, uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, every, everything I think or do is somehow influenced by travel. 
So my recommendation for change is not a book, but is is, is, a, is a TV series uh, by the late Anthony Bourdain. It's called Parts Unknown. Oh, right? Yes, uh, love it. Yeah, nice. and and one of the yeah. reasons I'm calling this out, especially in a food one, because food is such a central part of his travel. Right. Yeah. And, and every episode, you will see that he definitely sits out down with people of a community, not in a like a typical fancy restaurant, but either in, in a public space or in their homes or something and actually has a has a meal with them eating food, which they would usually cook. So it's not some, you know, super fine, fine dining kind of things, but very yeah. regular everyday things. Right. And uh, why I really like is I remember seeing this episode uh, where he was, he was here, visited Greece uh, after the Greece economy, the economy had collapsed and, you know, he was actually he was actually tracing the entire uh, challenges that the people of Greece are facing through the food itself, right? How simple things became uh, scarce and how it's impacting their cuisine and how it's impacting their regular lives. Yeah. And I found it was a beautiful, beautiful way to use food to understand people and places and cultures we go to. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I, every every year uh, around the time he died, you know, I really become sad. I, if you go and follow me on Instagram, why we travel forty two. Uh, every year there's one post about Anthony Bourdain uh, because he has probably shaped my way of travel so significantly and the way I look at travel so significantly that it's highly recommended. So the older seasons are available on Boot in India. Uh, I'm not sure where the newer seasons are available. I have seen it here and there in some bits and parts, but unfortunately, I can't have a perfect bang on recommendation <laughs> way to find him. But I'm sure you can. You are smart enough to Google and you will find it. But uh, our, think, uh, so Discovery's yes. got a new platform. I think it might be there. Discovery Plus, you mean? Yeah, Discovery's got a new platform, right? Uh, like it, so it might be there. Yeah. I, I know that a bunch of MythBusters episodes showed up over there after mm. not being available anywhere in India. Yeah, and uh, since you're talking about uh, food, uh, I think he also wrote a he wrote a very uh, a, a very controversial book. I think it was called Kitchen Confidential. Mm-hmm. Uh, and where he had exposed the entire restaurant industry and the, for example, the amount of butter, which is put in dishes just to make it taste good. Right. Right. And I think it's a fun book to read. Uh, right. I mean, it's, it's not something which is, you know, uh, brilliant in the way of being poignant, the way his, his, uh, his parts are known is, mm-hmm. but it is brilliant in the way, uh, telling us how messed up this entire food industry is. Right. Even at a restaurant level, so this is not about, you know, uh, 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 farming of animals or, you know, big companies and very regular restaurants, the kind of things they do and, you know, uh, what pa- passes off as fresh food is not really fresh food. So, right. yeah, that also I think would add as, uh, as, uh, as a recommendation uh, from Anthony Bourdain. So two very different sides of the spectrum of food, one being because the kitchen confidential kind of thing and the other being, of course, the parts unknown. Oh, very cool, man. Uh I would like to talk about uh, like two basic, basically two things. But uh, the second thing that I'm going to talk about is a few things in that subgenre. Basically, there are a few a couple of YouTube channels that I'd really like to mention. The first thing is again, since I've already talked about anime in the beginning of the episode, I would like to mention another anime, which is basically a battle anime, food related. Okay. okay? okay. So basically, they basically battle it out with food. I know it sounds insane, but you watch it and you're just as entertained as you would be in like if you're watching Naruto or One Piece or something. It's called Food Wars. Okay, that's the name of the anime. And uh, basically, it's just they have to. The basic thing is this is uh, uh, the the main guy whose name is uh, Soma. Uh, I'm forgetting his full name. Soma Yukihira is his full name. Okay. And uh, basically, he is this uh, child prodigy chef. Like not child prodigy since his birth. Now he's in like in mid teens. But since his birth, he's been like this child prodigy chef. And he finally joins this very prestigious school uh, for like elite chefs for like the a very elite school for chefs in the anime and uh, so this 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 school has their own uh, like power denomination like power 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 scaling of different characters so like there are like the 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 top 10 who are yeah, like this unachievable hierarchy. yeah exactly okay. yeah mm-hmm. who are like these unachievable students in the school and if you want to be like uh, remembered as like or, or known as like a very good chef you have to beat them so it's that kind of a thing. Yeah. And uh, uh, a very funny part about this uh, show is, so uh, basically if the food is too good on this show, the people who are eating it lose their clothes in bliss. Okay. <laughs> it's, I know it sounds weird. I do know Japanese very, very anime well. gets really, really <laughs> really, weird. Dude, really, really, really weird. This sounds uh, really weird. I, I mean, really like, weird. But they're, it's hilarious <laughs> because basically they're like, they're like in bliss, like everything around them. So they, they're naked. <laughs> okay. But everything around them is all bubbles and clouds and they're like just singing and dancing. 
<laughs> because okay. they had like the best food they ever had in their life or something. That just qualifies uh, one of the weirdest episodes of IBM Likes. We have gone from eating <laughs> people to people being so happy that they want to go off with food. Like this is weird. <laughs> uh, hey, we got to find a twist to talking about food show, for food, for food yeah, content, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, that's true. This no, not, a regular, not a regular episode of uh, just talking about regular food. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, just check it, check it out, man. I think you guys will really like it. This was like first two episodes, and you'll 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 be enjoying it pretty soon. So that's that. the the anime recommendation I have uh, for food. There are a couple of YouTube channels which I am obsessed with. Uh, so okay. firstly, I have started cooking a lot uh, during this time. Uh, have either of you also? Uh, I've been always cooked, into the so kitchen. I've always like to cook. So yeah. Okay, um, that's I, cool. I, I I'm a swiggy person. Yeah, or oh, a okay. real Chinese person. Well, yeah. I guess. Well, so, you know, there's actually, uh, there's a, uh, you know, all these home kitchens are sprouted up, right? So yes, there is somebody. The Fromagerie? Huh? The Sorry? Fromagerie? Is that what we're going to talk, talk about? No, uh, this oh, is no. actually, okay, uh, so this is a guy who lives very close to me, actually. I think it's called Wicked Cravings or something like that. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. uh, and, uh, no, sorry, his Goddamn Witch. Wicked Cravings is somebody else. Uh, oh, nice. uh, Goddamn Witch. And basically, it's like, you know, they do three days a week. Uh, they have these different sandwich preps, which you can get from them. Uh, so the grilled cheese they give as like a prep, right? So they'll send you the sandwich. The, uh, doesn't, they'll send oh, okay, you the sandwich and then you can get it at home. Yeah. Uh, but most of the other ones they cook and make, right? So I mean, like, uh, uh, yeah. but I mean, like, yeah, so I, I, I'll do stuff like that. Hmm. Okay, yeah. very cool. So uh, so I was talking about, uh, the, so I, I, as I was saying, I started cooking a, a lot uh, during, this time, uh, during this time. I made galauti kebabs, mutton galauti kebabs and chicken. Okay, I right. made uh, dal makhani from scratch, like proper. Dude, I was like Appetite so proud of my dal makhani. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Sorry? Appetite yeah. is returning. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah, I made dal makhani. I made uh, shahi paneer. Uh, and uh, dude, I have I've made pizzas at least 10 times during this entire lockdown. So I've... Like I've been going at it, and I love it. I'm having a great, uh, great phase in my life uh, with in that in that regard. So the the channels that I've been following because to be able to cook these foods are Ranveer Brar's channel, uh, yeah. Chef Ranveer Brar. He's on television uh, as well. Yeah, yeah. He's on television as well. Yes, but uh, his channel, like basically, I I saw the dal makhani and gulati kebab recipe from him. And dude, if you follow recipes, you will get it right, man. You can do a little bit of innovation in the middle, but you will get it right if you follow some of these guys' recipes. So Ranveer Brar is one of them. And uh, Jamie Oliver, uh, <laughs> surprisingly, uh, taught me how to make the focaccia bread properly. Okay. Uh, which, uh, again, I mean, not personally on his YouTube channel, but uh, it was, again, yeah. very cool. Uh, so, yeah, check these both guys yeah. out. Yeah, Other like, than that. I, so, I like sorry, a lot say. of the YouTube channels which do, like, you know, uh, Mumbai street food tours and stuff like that. Those yeah, yeah, I, I love those. Mm-hmm. Also. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Okay, coming, to the, coming in that regard, there is a channel called uh, The Best Ever Food Review Show. It's a YouTube channel. Okay. The Best Ever Food Review Show. This guy just, he has been to India. He recently went to Japan. He was in Vietnam during the lockdown. Uh, so he, basically this guy, his name is Sunny. Sunny, I'm forgetting his full name. Sunny, he goes from place to places, just going into every aspect of that one country. So like if, when he was in India, he went, he talked about street food. Then he has like a, uh, like a thousand rupees, uh, sorry, a hundred dollar food, street food challenge, challenge where he'll, where he'll have a hundred dollars, hundred US dollars in his hand. And he'll be like, I have to spend this dollar in one this many dollars in one day on street food and in india you can imagine our street food, our street food is so uh, cheap that how can you spend a hundred dollars you cannot in india you cannot you can, in I, I think you can only do it in uh if you do the Muhammad Ali road thing in uh this right and then you get like there are a couple of things which you can get like our two thousand bucks or something uh, you can't eat all of it you gotta share yeah. it you can't oh, uh, absolutely. but like, yeah. like even get a ran like, sikandari you can't possibly yeah. do it yourself no no yeah, you have this to guy share ate, like save puri and vada pav and all so he's not he's not racing there yeah but then dude when he was in india he also went to uh, have paper dosa and nobody told him how to have dosa so he's picking up the entire paper dosa and trying to shove it in his mouth <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah just check out this uh, food, best food review show and last YouTube channel that I really 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 really, really recommend is called The Pizza Show it's not a YouTube channel it's a show on the Munchies uh, YouTube channel it's called The Pizza Show and basically this guy his name is Frank Pinello he runs his own pizzeria from in New York, uh, and New York, as we know, has some of the best pizzas in the world. Uh, so he has his own pizzeria in New York called Best Pizza, and he goes around uh, basically America, which again known for its, uh, its tremendous pizza, and sometimes Italy uh, to different cities in these two countries to talk about the origins of pizzas in those cities, talk about the the uh, the best pizzerias in those cities, goes so to them, talks so to the chefs. Have they talked to like? Have we figured out the origin of pizza in Bombay? No, I have I'm, not. I'm, I'm yeah. very curious about this. Uh, 
uh, sorry, but uh, continue and then I'll bring my thing up later. No, no, I'm done. That's a, just check okay. out Pizza so, Show. That's, uh, okay, a little older than you guys, right? So I don't know if yeah. you guys remember this, but I came from the US to India in 1981. Okay, at that point in time, there was only one place where we could get pizza. Okay, okay. there was a place called Pastry Palace at Nepensi Road, which literally put a pizza on a bakri. Right, so you'd have a bakri with like sauce and cheese on top of it. There was no pizza. My people, my <laughs> people, I'm sorry. <laughs> the first time that I saw pizza like really, really happen over here was, uh, so there was a restaurant that opened in uh, uh, Tirupati Apartments, you know, where the nature's ba- at Malakshmi, right across the Malakshmi temp- uh, Temple. Mm-hmm. There was a restaurant that opened over there and New Yorker opened at the same time on Chopati. These were the first two places where we got pizza in India. Oh. Uh, and uh, and uh, again, I'm I'm kind of not uh, considering Trattoria because five star hotel dining was something that nobody did back then at all, yeah. right? I mean, like it was like completely. Um, I come from a relatively well off family, and for us, the idea of going to eat a meal at a five star was just out of the question. We would not do it, right? So I mean, like I'm not counting Trattoria, which I think has been around since like seventy nine or eighty, but there was no pizza in Bombay. So I'd love to know if somebody actually figured out like yeah, and this is my memory. Of Right. I'm sure that this is not exactly accurate. Yeah. There is probably a real history to it, but I, I'd love to know what the history of pizza in Bombay is because now it's the most popular thing, right? Yeah, correct. Uh, would, you like, would you guys like to quickly recommend uh, your favorite or two of your favorite restaurants around the city or uh, food outlets? Because uh, so, uh, uh, say, say let's, let's break it down. Let's do, uh, I, I imagine both of your pizza fans and we're already talking about pizza. Sure. Let's do your favorite pizzeria and then let's do your other favorite like non-pizza restaurant okay. because I'm, everyone loves pizza and they'll be interested in knowing what your favorite pizza ah, is. This is, uh, okay, you brought this out of nowhere. Without okay. Uh, yeah, sorry, I just thought of it. Favorite uh, okay, pizza. Okay, I, I can start. Huh. Uh, if you want, I can start. Uh, okay. My favorite pizzeria in Bombay is uh, 1441 Pizzeria. I like that. Uh, that's not bad. That's pretty good. I, I really love it because yeah. it's it has thin crust pizzas and it's wood. Uh, they make it in a wood fired oven. Right. And it's basically like if you go there, uh, or I don't know if they are back open. Uh, they're not back open yet. I guess. No, they're, uh, they're, they're delivering. Oh, uh, they're delivering. One four one is delivering. Yeah. One is delivering, yeah. Uh, and October first, I think restaurants are supposed to open, so maybe they'll open back up. Right. And uh, uh, so yeah, uh, they have a wood fired oven. They make uh, pizzas from scratch. Basically, uh, it's Subway but for pizzas. So you can go there, you can tell them your own toppings and whatever you put, somehow the pizza still tastes excellent uh, because they have like this epic wood fired oven, which is just, just uh, great. So please check those guys out. Okay. What do you guys uh, I have, uh, so I have actually kind of sort of two, right? Uh, so one is the pizza, which I'm most familiar with, which I've eaten the most, uh, which is... Uh, so Mangi Fera or Cafe Mangi or whatever they oh, yeah. are at this point, right? Yeah. Whatever they may be, yeah, right? Yeah. That's the one that I've yeah. eaten the most. Uh, one of my closest friends uh, owns those uh, those brands. And so every party that my extended friend circle has, seven out of 10 of them are at one of his <laughs> locations. Because oh, wow. discount, no? Of course. Yeah, of course. Uh, uh, <laughs> so but, uh, that, that, so but that's my most familiar and I love it. It's really, really good. But the one that blew my mind was one that I had uh, like maybe two, three months before lockdown. Uh, yeah. At Fort, uh, the ex-chef of the table, Alex Sanchez, uh, has created has a new restaurant called Americano. And the pizza at that place is incredible. Okay. So I, I mean, just like incredible. Uh, so yeah, I'd strongly recommend that. Okay. I can't, I, I can't describe it more than incredible, right? Because it's pizza. I mean, like, there's not like much you can do yeah, to give more description in than Bombay that. after all these connotations. <laughs> Why did I move to Bangalore? <laughs> <laughs> My years in Bombay was food list, man. Okay, so I'm, I'm still going to go with Bombay recommendations because I moved to Bangalore a little while ago, and then thanks to COVID, I have not really been eating out. Uh, so I, I'll give two recommendations. One is a proper suburbs recommendation, Andhri recommendation. Okay, it's not Joey's Pizza, but it's Eva's Pizza. Okay, Eva's Pizza okay. is this place in in Marol, right? And yeah, yeah. Uh, you can get thin crust, thick crust. I, I, I say in Pawai, I have called from Eva Pizzas quite a lot. Yeah, right. And, and yeah. You, they are the one people who will never skimp on cheese. Like this cheese is always oh. excess. Yeah, yeah. Right? So you, if you don't like enough cheese, you can actually remove the cheese, but you will never, you know, yeah. no, no, no shame. They're very, very good with toppings. They're very good with cheese, yeah. right? And it's quite freshly done. And I think it's very reasonably priced, especially if you're having a house party. I think they have very good deals and stuff. So very yeah. economical uh, if you're living in Bombay and living in the suburbs to call from Eva's Pizza. So that's one yeah. recommendation. Uh, the other recommendation in terms of dine-in uh, is I've always liked going to Pizza Express. 
right i think it it strikes oh, yeah. a good yeah, balance like this, this. uh you know between taste uh, and not being too pricey mm-hmm. uh right and uh, always like having a good time with all the other stuff you can have there so i think i would definitely recommend pizza express i i was very heartbroken when the i think they closed down the one in pawai uh about a year year and a half ago uh so that was no no hard. the pizza express in pawai is still there uh it w- it was still there but it's it's been shut during the lockdown ah, but it was okay. still there otherwise oh, cool. uh, i'm not sure if they're coming back though because uh, yeah. just a lot of pace in power so, have been shutting down those are the two of my uh, recommendations on uh, pizza and uh, yes yeah, unfortunately cool. also reminded me that last last december i was in naples uh, i was in italy and yeah. amount of pizza i have eaten i felt like a pizza myself after a point <laughs> right <laughs> uh, because i was like how can you not eat this like for every single meal of the day <laughs> yeah so it was fantastic and, and just anywhere you go the pizza is good like you don't even have to yeah. like you know go uh, to authentic if i if place. i can quickly on a side note uh my girlfriend who's been now back in indonesia has started her own her own uh, home business home food business and she makes pizza it's called buono uh, which means just tasty uh, okay. buono and she makes pizzas focaccias uh, carrot cakes sorry sorry orange cakes and uh, It's really good. I've had her pizzas, and I would recommend if any of our listeners are in Indonesia, Jakarta, please. Like you could say otherwise, even if you wanted to. Yeah, I could. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, and uh, okay, regular restaurants wise, I would. Regular uh, restaurants. Uh, hmm. Uh, tough. Okay, let's see. Uh, probably Bombay Canteen or Coco. One of those two. Both of them are Kamla Mills are in great, South Bombay. Uh, Southish Bombay, not exactly South Bombay, but Southish Bombay. Yeah. uh coco is um, i i think uh, broad oriental i i guess is the right term it's chinese japanese korean all kinds of stuff basically all far eastern food mixed in right uh yeah. they have some really really good uh, they have uh, they have so they have uh they have broccoli with pimenta which is one of the best things i've ever eaten and it's bizarre to think that is so good yeah. uh yeah it's a, it's just broccoli Yeah, but it's incredible. Days generally, don't go together. But yeah, but it's incredible. It's amazing. I mean, like you know, when, uh, I had a party uh, with a few friends for a friend who was moving out, right? And so one of the appetizers was this broccoli dish, and that dish was basically just constantly just like off the table, <laughs> off the table, off the table, off the table. Everybody just wanted more and more of it. It was weird. Uh, uh-huh. And uh, I, I love Bombay Canteen too. I think Bombay Canteen just does like great, like uh, across the board, all kinds of stuff. I like the uh, so what I really love the the, the thing that. really moves to moves me at bombay canteen the thing that i have every time i go there is yeah. one of their thepla tacos they have a couple of veg and a couple of non veg but the tacos made inside of theplas i just love them so by the way since you mentioned bombay canteen uh, i think the chef of bombay canteen uh, thomas zakaria i think it's Z- zakia yeah zakia so he he, ha- he has a instagram uh, account called chef t zak right. and he has the most wonderful recipes right uh, and all of them are archi- archived in stories So if you uh, Andrik, if you want to cook some some food, I think you should also check that out on yeah. Instagram. It's a really no, good that, uh, he, he's amazing. He's an amazing yeah, he's really cook. good. Yeah. He's also the yeah. I think he's the he designed the menu at O Pedro as well, if I'm not mistaken. Oh yes, yeah. Which is going to be my recommendation, by the way, for regular restaurants. <laughs> so O Pedro <laughs> in BKC, and the other one I also like uh, uh, in BKC is Taftoon Bar and Kitchen. Uh, I think okay. they have really interesting Indian food. Right, okay. uh, I mean, just, just I've never been. You should go there because yeah. you would actually have food from Chhattisgarh, you know, and from lesser known cuisines of India. Okay. Right, and uh, I have been there about six, seven times. Uh, you know, uh, definitely would uh, recommend going there. And it's 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 not going to burn a hole in your pocket. It's not one of those places, right? right. It's it's fairly reasonable by even by BKC standards. It's quite reasonable. Uh, we we BKC tend sometimes tend to be a little pricier. right so i think uh-huh. that's one place i recommend and uh, if you have a lot of money to blow up right like i i did this when i was leaving bombay after 9 years right i was like okay just starting a new chapter in life <laughs> and stuff right i went to uh, itc maratha and i went to peshawar oh, oh, oh my Which one god peshawar peshawar dude it's it's yeah. totally worth it like it is, all the money yeah, spent is totally worth it It But is, I is. know, dude, a dal makhani there costs like nine hundred bucks, which is like what? Dude, so you are asking for once in nine years, no? Yeah. Right? I mean, fair <laughs> enough. Chalo, take it. It's I mean, like you, you go to Peshawari, you're looking at three grand. But per it's head. great food for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I for mean, sure, it, sure. it's incredible, yeah, but yeah. it's three grand per head. I mean, like there's just no getting around that. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah, but I, I also uh, I actually on the same Peshawari, uh, I also like kebab corner at the Intercontinental at Naraman Point. It's the same kind of thing. It's almost I feel like mm-hmm. one's ripped off the menu from the other because it's like it's okay. the same thing. Peshawari, you get twelve things over here. You get twelve things, right? And it's like you know one kebab of each kind of like protein and like you know you have dal and you have uh, uh, so there's a formula to it almost. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Nice. but both of them. Uh, are great, so. You know. 
uh coming to my picks i would uh, so there is like a no this is not fine dining this is like just casual dining uh it's uh, there's a place called lucknowi tunde kebab in that they have one jogeshwari and one in kurla and oh, yeah, uh, i've seen that also in yeah. uh, you also get it at flea bazaar so flea bazaar is a restaurant which is in kamla mills where they have like a okay. bunch of mini restaurants so one of the mini restaurants is this lucknowi tunde ka tunde kebab okay so these are just So basically everything else at the restaurant is frankly okay, okay. but this Lucknowi tunde kebab is to die for. Okay. It is just literally just melt in your mouth, melt in your hands. Everything, just the taste. Every time I eat it, it's just mind blowing. So okay. please check that out. Uh, the second one, which is a little more fine dining, fine dining is in uh, Bandra uh, near Reclamation called uh, Salt Water Cafe. Of course, I know. So, uh, which I really like. Dining, 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 yeah. yeah, it's casual dining. That's not fine dining. It's casual, casual dining, dining only. Yeah. Yeah. It's I mean, fine dining. Well. It's, <laughs> it's a slightly more expensive yeah. casual okay. dining, but yeah. it's casual yeah. dining. Correct. Yeah. Uh, I mean, but they have something called. No. Sorry, sorry. They have something called the bacon jelly burger, no. which uh, sounds weird, but tastes yeah. just ridiculously good. Yeah, they do great omelets uh, and stuff like that. I eat. I I I I often go there and have omelets. I think for me, it's more of a brunch breakfast place. I don't think I end up going in the evenings as much, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Uh, so yeah, that's about awesome. it. Uh, thank you so much. This was a great, great episode, yes. guys. Uh, I'm yeah, gonna I, just go hog on. We got everybody's food uh, menu. We got everybody's appetites back after my little cannibalism diversion. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank yeah. you. For, thank you for having this section towards the end. End it on a good yeah. note. <laughs> just like dessert, you know, ends a meal on a good note. We're ending this yeah. on a good note. Yeah. Uh, Utsav, where can we follow you online? Okay. So uh when I am not trying to stuff my face with food I I am found on Instagram YB Travel 42 and on Twitter Utsav Memoria and of course you have postcards from nowhere on the IVM network we have just 50 episodes and in fact I had a entire uh, season or I'd say an entire theme on Indian food uh in wow. my podcast so you can even check that out if you want to have some very interesting aspects and some not so great aspects about Indian food as well Very cool uh, uh I'm Doshi Amit on most social platforms Cool, and you can listen to Amit every week on uh, Cyrus Has Podcasts, and uh, I am Antarik Sti and Antarik Stack uh, on Instagram and Twitter respectively. And uh, thank you so much, guys. Good stuff. Thank you so much, Amit. Thanks, thank you so Amit. much. Thanks, Antarik. And uh, thank you guys so much for listening in. See you guys soon. Remember the last vacation you took? What about the one you took three years ago? Okay, how much do you really remember? It's a question I've asked myself often over a decade of traveling the world. Hey, I'm Utsav and I do not travel the world for a living. I have a full-time job and responsibilities, but I have made traveling the world a priority. Priority enough that I negotiate extra leave in my job contracts, obsessively track my frequent flyer miles, and I'm willing to take off at the sight of a cheap ticket. Yes, I am cheap. I have lived and worked in 3 countries. I understand human behavior for a living and these experiences have given me unique insights into places, people and culture. With over a decade of travel behind me, I increasingly realized one thing that we cannot see everything. So whatever we see, we must see deeply. Because as the film of memory decays, the imprints which will stand the test of time are the ones felt by the immersion of the senses, not by fleeting encounters with them. Postcards from Nowhere is an immersion into the world of slow travel, one story at a time. Tune in every Thursday on the IVM Podcast app, website, or wherever you get your podcasts from. How many times have you motivated yourself to improve your sleep, or lose weight, or be more productive? How many times have you failed? Hi, my name is Ashton Doctor. Tune into my show The Habit Coach podcast where we focus on creating small tiny habits to improve your life instead of those big impossible tasks. So make listening to me a habit every Monday, Wednesday and Friday on the IVM podcast app or ivmpodcast.com or on your favorite podcasting app.